lot of come together this meeting. Lord, we, we ask you for your blessings and your, to give us the knowledge to make the right decision for the county and the citizens of this county and for this place, Lord. And Lord, we ask you for the safety of everybody here. And all, all, when we get done with this meeting, on our way back to our designated area, please be with us and have the people safe. Father God, be with our family so that what family would be in need for us, Lord. And we thank you for everything you do for us, Lord God. In your precious, wonderful, holy name, I do pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first thing this morning, we have uh, public comments. Um, yes, ma'am, Ms. Cannon. Mr. Chairman. I would appreciate, I know I didn't come all that early, but I would appreciate it if a few more agendas would be made available in the box, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Cannon. Ms. Cannon, here. Thank you. We got one over here. Thank you. All right, first this morning we have Mr. Elijah Williams, who's here to speak about a EMS procedure. I'm here. Uh, Mr. Lively, you face the podium there. Yes, sir. Thank you. My concern is for I've come here all to us. trip over your tripod. Small <laughs> uh, I had an incident. My brother in law was calling the emergency system for he couldn't breathe. Uh, his lungs were filled up with, with food. He was on dialysis number one. So my sister called me, and I was here within 50 yards from me, so I went over there. And so she had called 911, and she was on the phone. I said, are they coming? Are they coming? Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I got to answer these questions. I said, answer questions. So I grabbed my cell phone, and I called. Uh, and someone answered the phone. And I said, well, we got an emergency here. Uh, my sister's trying to get an ambulance here, and nobody's coming. Well, they're taking care of it. They got to answer all these questions. My point is, some of us will probably die if the procedure has changed from where it used to be. Now, they used, I used to go my airline service, I'm a diabetic, three times a week. And every time I come home, about four minutes, somebody was in my yard. And I didn't have to answer nothing. They take you to the hospital right away. And it seemed like we must not have a GPS system uh, or whatever to know how to even find it. Maybe that needs to be updated because it passed my house two times. So I had to run out to the road to wave them in. I got phone numbers out there. So that's no excuse. But I would think that the service would be better because it could happen to you all. It really could happen to anybody in here. If you got to wait for them, if you got to answer all those questions, you probably just call the sheriff's department and let them rush you to the hospital. And that's how I feel about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. K. Gaither. <coughs> Had not been bathed, and I had some comments about the fact that um, it didn't, didn't smell good. And one of them that did not get adopted um, really didn't look that good at it. It was very evident the dog was dirty. Uh, the other thing is, I had addressed this issue with Commissioner Meeks as an uh, adoption again at Ace Hardware. Uh, I don't see why that some of our volunteers, I know we have two for animal control, why they cannot be used during these adoption events and us, us not have to pay the paid employees to be there. I understand that's overtime or whatever, but it seems to me like if you're telling me that we cannot afford to buy 
worm meditation because we do not have the funds, why do we drag five paid employees out to an adoption event when we have two volunteers that could take two places at least? And if we would allow more volunteers, we could have more to, to fill in those spaces and be able to buy all of the, the worm meditation that we need. I think it's something that we all need to, to consider. We don't need any more parasites being shared with the community. We really do not. We need to stop as many as we possibly can. So, that's my Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Bill Henderson, Florida Department of Transportation. Um, good morning. I'm Bill Henderson with the Florida Department of Transportation. I'm invited myself down here for two reasons. Um, first one, I'd like to invite y'all and pass it down to him, but personally invite you to our public community, uh, public workshop up in Lake City on October the 8th. Um, we're going to do it a little different this year. We're going to have an open house from 2 to 6. All our um, construction, maintenance personnel, our upper management is going to be there and give you a chance to come out there and meet with us, talk more on one about the pressing issues in your county. Um, as you probably know, the legislature is starting in January of this year instead of March. And what that happens to us, all our scheduling is tied into the legislature running, so we're condensing everything two months earlier than we normally do. Our work program meetings are normally in December, this year it's in October. As such, we haven't got our, I usually hand out a, a, a plan showing our tentative work program. We don't have it quite ready yet, but we do have a website on that handout and then I would just uh, in the week or so go to that we should have those um, documents ready. Um, the second reason I wanted to come down here, of course all y'all all know member Jordan Green who used to work down here as our rural, rural liaison. Well he has been promoted and I brought Barney Bennett with me. He's going to be taking Jordan's place. Um, Barney been Barney's been with the department for 10 years, working the plane. I think he's going to do a great job. He's got the same haircut as Jordan has. So um, I think he's going to really do well. And um, we look forward to continuing our good work and relationship with Levy County. And um, that's really all I have. I just wanted to come down to say hello and invite you to our meeting. What time did you say the meeting was? It's yes. going to be a workshop. It's going to be from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock at a district office in Lake City. We're not going to have any kind of formal presentation, but it's just a chance to talk with us more and more. Like I said, our upper management will be there, as well as people from our construction and maintenance offices. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Weatherford, would you like to give a report on the animal control uh, adoption event real quick? And then we're going to let Ms. Carroll go because she has a uh, conference call she has to attend. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank all y'all. And as was said earlier, we did have a very successful adoption event this weekend. Um, we took 12 animals for dogs, and nine of them was adopted. We took five cats, and four of them got adopted. So everything went well. <laughs> just wanted to inform y'all that uh, we had a very successful day and we had 17 kennels open yesterday and that was the result of having that pet adoption. Very good. Uh, Any questions for David? Ma'am. Yes. Um, basically, we did worm every animal that went to the um, adoption event Saturday and uh, in the future, provided we do have the funds, we will try to worm these animals every time we have an adoption event. There again, we, we do worm all the puppies every time they come in, everything that's usually under six months of age gets wormed. And um, we are working on the older animals. And like I said, it's gonna really depend on the funds being there for the worm medicine. But anything that we send out, we, we're trying to worm all the animals now. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, we have a couple of volunteers, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Kay Gaither had mentioned the fact that uh, a lot of them could have been paid. Why right. is it that the 
volunteers weren't called in to uh, give you guys a hand, at least have them made so it would be more presentable at an adoption. Okay, we do have two uh, um, volunteers. One, which Mr. Albert is your wife, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I think that when we brought this up, that they we usually try to save the animals before each adoption event, and um, we did not call the, the volunteers. Basically, I felt like that they would have came up or called us, and we would have let them come in and, and bathe and stuff. Well, we take direction. Right. From us. Direction yeah. From yours. And I was, what I was wondering is why wasn't anyone notified to come up and do that for you? Well, um, basically, we were just really busy last week trying to get everything done, and we didn't talk about it. I, I don't really think that us not bathing them few animals hurt the adoption rate. I really don't. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. First off, I want to make it known that I was at Lincoln County when I asked them to let me know if I could come up on Friday right. before the event and bathe the animals. Mm -hmm. so and nobody called you? Well, nobody told me even then when I was there if I could bathe the animals because I would gladly do that. I will work with that direction. And one other question I had to ask is if the buckets were put up on the panels yet? No, ma'am. We were waiting on the clevises. I think Mr. Bob was supposed to end up trying to get us more clevises for the buckets. Um, we did talk about that this week, so they haven't been put up yet. <laughs> I just want to say one thing. I've been involved with the you know, either the Levy County Humane Society or with David's office for probably 12 years. And I wish some of the people in this room would understand how this department has gone from dark to light and appreciate that. It, it seems as if every meeting we go to, we hear more complaints. And I wish that people would understand the good as opposed to always griping about what you perceive as the bad. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Williams. I have to comment on that. Um, I learned this from sitting with you last night. There's a dog, uh, I'm quite sure some of us have been to see one, that hangs out there all the time and got the name. Uh, our vice mayor said sometimes he sleeps on her porch. They've called to try to get this dog captured, but it, it, it seems like you can't do it. I have to capture the dog myself, so that's what that is up and going with that picture. Right. So that dog is easy to capture. Now, this is, a, this is in the city, correct? Okay. And y'all do have animal services in the city. So we have helped y'all in the past get an animal. There was a dog that actually hung out at the little gypsy store right down the road, and we had to end up tranking that dog. Uh, and I talked to Mr. Greenlee about this other dog you're talking about. If, um, and we will assist y'all, but there again, if it's that easy to catch, it's in the city. Right. Y'all know. Right. Well, yeah. Thank you. Ms. Reese. Um, yes, to Ms. Collins' comment, it has um, gone. Ms. Reese, please address the board. Sorry. Yes, ma'am to Ms. Collins' comment about it going from dark to light. I agree, it has. There's been change. But what is the problem in seeing it going forward? It's not so much griping as recommendations from the citizens. That's, that's all it is. It's not a whole bunch of griping. <coughs> We're a part of the community and the community of the shelter as well. And we like to see things improve. We're not saying that the shelter isn't doing better than what it's been in the past. <clears throat> Certainly with the vet on and other procedures, it's moving ahead. We have a couple of problems. We just feel more adoptions would help. You say that you can't do it. We feel worming of all dogs would help. We can't do it. But we don't, we don't feel that there can't be more done. It doesn't mean it's a criticism. It may sound that way, I'm sorry. And as far as the LARC comment, mm -hmm. I understand LARC. Do you know what SBA is? Yes, I got, I got work Okay, for right, um, I don't have to make a here. choice. I do not have to make a choice if I like dogs or want to work with people. I work with the Spina Bifida Association, and I do have LARC. 
in my community that I do work for because of members of my family. So I don't make choices. I don't have to. Well, I'd like to see the animals. That's a wonderful thing that you work with. Right. I really appreciate okay. it. That's to address people. what you said to me last Very week. Very thankful people. Right. In my family. So I don't make choices. David, what is, how far does it cost the worm though? Um, I'll have to get back to you on that price. The worm that we use, I'm, I'm thinking anywhere from $65 to $85 a bottle. Okay, because we get, it's called Pantera, which is the best worm out there, basically. It's not the best thing. It's not a one time deal. I mean, it's like every well, two weeks, every week. Well, three weeks. what you want to do is you go and worm them the first time, and then you wait two to three weeks and you worm them again. So it, it could take several times. Yes. Yeah. And the flip side of that is, if you get no, you give him one dose of it, and you don't have him. Right. When it's done, then, then yeah, it's it's the it's it's you do one dose. Right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sorry to bother you, but no, I just sorry. wanted to make it a statement. I've taken many dogs from Leaky County Animal Shelter, and several dogs I have taken home bleeding from the rectum from the from the worms that they are coming out with. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know. So I've spent lots of money to do that. And there is cheaper dewormer that you can do that will deworm the pets. There's also heartworm medication that you can give them all at once so that they're not coming out with their heartworm positive. And if there's a fundraiser we can do to do that, we can get that done too. And I'm not saying anything about anybody who's working up there. I understand you're doing the best that you can with what you got. And that's why I wanted to help in the first place. Thank you. Ms. Gates. Yes, sir. Uh, this is going to upset Tony because I'm going to say something that is probably a little on the negative side, but I had one person that was really interested in taking Buster. You know, she, she really liked him. And I met her later after the event over at CVS, just a happenstance. Do not know the lady's name, nothing. But she came up to me and she said, was that dog neutered? And I said, as far as I know, yes, that's what they told me. She said, well, if he was neutered, he was neutered in such a short time before that he was so swollen he appeared to not be neutered so she didn't trust that it was so maybe we need to think about you know which dogs are going to come up for adoption or what because they're all going to be spayed or neutered before they go out but we lost a, an opportunity with buster that that really bothered me because i thought well number one they said he was so i know he was we can sit here and go back and forth and i'm not going to sit up here and go back and forth with y'all but i can tell you that we have one week to decide which animals are going to go to these events, okay? So therefore, if the public comes in and will adopt that animal, then we've got to try to tell them, no, we're going to take this to this special event this weekend. So the way around having a dog that's been freshly neutered or spayed, there's no way to do that because we've got to line it up at the beginning of that week who we're going to take with us to that event Saturday. So most of the animals are neutered either Thursday or Friday. And, and I don't see no way around that because I'm not going to tell the public when they come in in the first week, oh, you can't adopt this dog, I'm saving him for this event Saturday. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times the decision is made in the latter, latter part of the week. So, all right. Thank you, David. Thank you. The, the information was on Buster's card that he was there. Yes, ma'am. And I, I knew he was, but I could not convince her of that. Ms. Carroll, you asked to go early. You have a conference call. Thank you. Sorry, I called y'all. Look around. Thank you so much. Good morning. Um, this is an amendment to the original 2014-15 contract that we currently have with Collinson and uh, Company doing business as Interfuse Media. Uh, they provide digital marketing services for us. They are a sole source. Um, there are no other agencies currently providing this um, elaborate amount of, of digital marketing services at this lower fee, and they designed it for small destination marketing organizations uh, within the state of Florida um, that could participate with them to be able to get the service. And this is an amendment to the original contract that we currently have to extend it for another uh, 12 months for the next fiscal year. A contract year starting October 1, going to September uh, 30th of um, next year. And this is also part of the marketing plan that 
you approved um, in July, July 21st, and it's also been approved by the Tourist Development Council. So, Any questions for Ms. Carroll? Would you go over what all they do? Um, it's, it's in the packet. Um, it's every month they provide um, quarterly metrics, uh, review and analysis of what's happening on our website. They also uh, provide um, strategies and adjustments for optimizing what's happening on our website. Um, there's a monthly newsletter and an email blast that goes out, and they report the metrics of, of whether you're getting organic openings, um, what the status is up. We're driving everybody to the website, so that's helping uh, people to find us. Clevy.com. No, no, that's the visitlevy.com. The clevy.com is on the billboard. The visitlevy is our. Um, is our normal one that drives to our website. And they can yeah. find us through our website with, e with either visit Nature Coast or, or visit um, Levy.com. But that's not on the bill signs. What's not on the bill? Well, that's correct. We did, a, we did two campaigns with Visit Levy, and in order to find out, what, to get some idea whether the billboards were working for us, we changed the URL to C Levy. That's the only that the only people that see that billboards are going to be able to uh, coming to that website. It still comes to our website, same website. Mm -hmm. It's just a different way of tracking who's who's coming to the website. So you set up another URL um, so that you can track um, the people that are coming to the website will be the ones that will only be seen on, on I-75. So it's an analytics that helps us. It still won't prove even when we get those uh, that report back at the end of the time, what this next um, campaign, it really won't tell us if there's a conversion. Anybody who sees the billboard, anybody who goes to the website, you're really not never going to know whether those people actually ever come to Levy County. So it's a, but at least it will help us to see <coughs> if it's attracting people to come to the website to come to Levy County. So, which is a better way of a better metric. Let me see if I can explain it. A little easier. On the old billboard, we had visit leave. And so we did see a spike in people who visit the website, but we weren't sure if it was from the billboard or if it was from the advertising we do in the magazines or if it was from uh, the events. So one of the people on the TDC board said, well, we'll just create a different uh, entry, you know, URL, and you can track that. So that's why we came up with C leave. So now we can go and say, well, uh, 2,500 people visited C Levy or came in through C Levy. So we know that 2,500 people oh, got no. the got the idea. Message. They saw the, the message, message from the billboard. From the billboard. Because that's the only place it's being it's promoted. Being, because the other way, you didn't know if the billboard was working or for advertising in our in our magazines and right. things were working. So. So we're trying at this point we're trying to determine whether the billboards are working at, if there's a value in putting that much money into it. So and what how much longer do you have before you can start crunching numbers and figure out if the billboard worth it or not? <laughs> well, well it's only for a six month period that we've been in with the C Levy and it's not finished with that campaign. That campaign ends in the I think the end of December or the first of January. So we're sort of not quite there yet. Um, but we will be able to know at least in a six months campaign whether it's working or not. Just to some degree. Mm. But these are people who run our website. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a different, this amendment has nothing to do with the billboards. This can. What is the cost of the billboard over the cost of this contract? This has nothing to do with the billboard. The, the, the question about the billboard was why is the billboard say C Um This is just for the website and it's also um, they're they're also creating native content which is rich in our keywords I know it's all technical but it has to do with driving people and getting people who are searching for things to be able to get them to so that our our website will come up in the higher listings so they're they're developing um, content and, and stories and they're doing a lot of that kind of thing um, within the scope of the e-newsletter 
uh, it takes them to three different stories. So, and that, that all stays fresh on our website. So that it's, it's building as we go through with the next marketing plan with them. And it's been working real, really well. And I can tell you, Um, I can tell you that the open rate on our emails is at 15%. Um, our Facebook fans have grown by 80% since we've done this campaign. Um, the native content, um, we're getting over 1,600 in open uh, with that. And um, it's building. I mean, they've, they've really just started in, not, we started in October, we didn't really start the campaign. About November, so it hasn't even been a full year. So. And our organic traffic on our website is up by 23 percent. That's that's unheard of. I mean, that's really a great number for us. So, do I hear a motion? Motion to approve the amendment. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Stevens, a second by Commissioner Joyner. Is there any further discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Grant. Mr. Chairman, I've seen those billboards. There's nothing that I can see on those billboards that direct you how to get to Levy County. There's no exit sign to get off to go to Levy County or anything like that. Well, the object the object is to direct them to the website. That's that's the whole point of it. Well, the whole point, ma'am, is in my opinion, for what it's worth. You're driving down the road. You don't have access to a computer. You need a you need an exit sign to get off to bring you to Levy County. Well, in the last two campaigns, we did do exit signs. Um, the problem comes. It's very. It's kind of complicated in the sense that um, when they move our signs, you don't always get the same sign. So if you if you have a, a vinyl sign and they're going to move it to another sign, sometimes the signs are not the same size. So this last campaign, we decided I decided not to put the exit signs on there, the exit numbers on there, because it just becomes very complicated in moving the signs back and forth. So we tried it just to see about getting them just to the to the website. And the other signs also had um, had exit numbers. They had exit numbers. No, just exit numbers. Um, and and still, well, okay. uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed? Motion raised. Thank you. Thank you. I hear uh, on the way to, uh, do you have the, the Germany flag? Yes. We have a landing page. Sorry. We have a landing page. On the on the home page, we have up in the top right hand corner, we have a German flag that says Willkommen, which is welcome. And we want to welcome German visitors. It's the only uh, international page that we have because this, the um, research shows that the German um, visitor has a, a, a minimum of three week, a three week stay when they come to Florida. So we have a, a higher opportunity of once they fly into an international airport, that they will rent a car and f come find us. So we have on that land, once they click on that German flag, it takes them to a, um, a page that's all in German, and it has different things about what you can do, hiking, biking, scuba diving, um, cave diving, uh, some of the things that we know um, that, that the international guest likes to do. And so, um, that's, it's just a way of hopefully gaining another visitor to our area. Ms. Cannon. Mr. Cannon, I have just one question. Yes, ma'am. Respect for me. Who put the German on that page? <laughs> Where is that German coming from? <coughs> I'm not sure what you mean. Who, 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 wrote, who wrote the or who, yeah. who wrote the text that's on the page? I ooh, it's been so long. I think it's um I think it was either Visit Florida. I mean, is there something is there, is there something wrong with it? Is, oh, okay. 
It's a late but fine, not today. <laughs> well, I would love for you to look at it, and if you find anything that's erroneous, I would love to know so we could change yep. it. Careful, because she is. Uh, <laughs> Whiz whenever it comes to editing things. I would love to have you as a resource. Transportation disadvantage. <laughs> Contract service. <laughs> well, I really would like to extend it to another page, so that's great. I would, that would be wonderful. I, I would love that. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Miss Locke. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I'm here today to ask for your approval of the annual county contract between the health department and the county. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. There are no substantive changes um, from last year to this year. Appreciate that, and and uh, I think uh, the support that you can provide with our legislators on our behalf would be very helpful, uh, at least to stop the um, you know the reduction in general revenue. That would it would be helpful. Because I know in the, in the last year we've had to let some people go, and that's pretty depressing. Um, so. And hopefully that's that's the end of it. Yes, ma'am. Um, but. I would hope that there are no further general revenue cuts from Tallahassee. It has been it has been a very tough past two and three years, as it has been for all the counties as well. Um, but I'm I'm hoping that this might be, we're leveling off and that this might be the end of it. But certainly, uh, if you have an opportunity to talk with the legislators and let them know the. <coughs> the great things that we do for the community, and we'd like to continue to do that, but it does take resources. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your support as well, every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. What's the pleasure of the board? Make the motion to approve the resolution. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Joyner, a second by Commissioner Rooks. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Uh, Wubakuchi Aquatic Restoration Group, Mr. Dan Hilliard. Mr. Chairman, I am Dan Hilliard, representing uh, Wubakuchi Aquatic Restoration. Thank you for your time. And it was a glorious morning on the way up here. My wind is falling up for the first time this season. I can tell you how pleased I am to get out of the rain. Um, I made a brief presentation uh, last April to the uh, commission regarding a project that we have underway. Uh, uh, it's an environmental assessment of the West Bakuchi River. I would describe the basic framework of that three phase project. Uh, the first phase is complete. Uh, just as a refresher, phase two is a, a two year uh, collection of, of samples and biological. Uh, assessments uh, in the system and then phase three would be a, a finalization of the report to, uh, to seek remedy to the degradation in the river and more significantly perhaps the the loss of uh, biological productivity is the characterization that I use then and use today all of our uh, the, the notable predator species that we used to see in the river, uh, the alligators, the otters, the bass, uh, these things are gone. So we were, we're seeking answers to that. Um, the phase one of the report was completed in uh, late 2013, 
2014, we made it. Uh, uh, we reached an agreement with our uh, contractor and consultant, Wetland Solutions Incorporated, to uh, uh, develop this project, uh, move it forward. Uh, the billing that we got out of this is the final thing. Uh, the estimated cost was rather daunting. It was 234,000 for the aggregate of phase two and phase three. We did make an application for funding assistance with the Restore Act uh, Advisory Committee here in Levy County. That's been a very long process. We appreciate that. Given the fact that none of us are getting any younger, we, uh, we moved to uh, uh, see if we could accelerate this process uh, at the recommendation of our uh, contractor, Well Solution. Uh, we got in touch with the Florida Department of uh, Environmental Protection. Briefed you at the last presentation that we were in negotiations with them to participate in the project. I'm very pleased to tell you today that they are on board with it um, and the uh, breadth and scope of phase two has been largely redefined by their involvement. Um, as part of that parcel, uh, it was also recommended that we contact uh, Swift Mud, uh, the Southwest Florida Water Management District for uh, assistance in uh, collecting these samples and doing the various biological surveys and so forth. Um, I did not know at the time, I've learned since, that you just don't fill a jug of water and send it to Tallahassee. It actually requires state certification if you want the data to have any credible basis. And um, it's, well, there's science involved and it requires state certification. So, uh, we were looking at that, and it had implications in a lot of a lot of regards. The first of which, um, the DEP requested that we increase the sampling frequency from quarterly to monthly for water. The uh, uh, sediments and other assessments, uh, biological assessments, would remain pretty much intact based on the scope of services that was presented last April. Um, that had the effect. Their participation had the effect on one hand of reducing the, the very high cost of uh, analytical work for the samples, yet it also increased our labor cost threefold. And that's like, you know, dancing with the devil as far as the way I'd characterize it. And we got Swift Mud involved, and uh, that had a very positive effect on that. Um, and looking, taking that, stepping back a little bit, we took a look at the project where it stood at that point. We had collaboration with state agencies. I think a great deal of uh, credibility had been added to the process. And uh, aside from being bystanders, they were now invested in the project. Uh, the next thing that was on our plate was to get this project going. And uh, with uh, Humble goals. I approached the uh, uh, community of Yankee Town and later the community of English, and um, they jumped on board with this project. And I have subsequently become a disciple of collaboration. I believe in that very strongly. Um, and we have uh, uh, we've been touching base with other uh, jurisdictions and uh, other funding sources. Uh, the net result of all of this uh, at the last Restore Act committee meeting uh, we reduced our requested funds from 125 to 85,000 and in light of developments last night uh, and this morning I'm pleased to tell you that uh, Yankee County is committed to providing $25,000 in funding for this project <coughs> and, and English and likewise uh, uh, allocated funds in their budget for a pretty full amount uh, at the next RA hearing, we will reduce our request. Uh, I'm going to recommend to our board that we reduce down to 50000 um, But with that said, uh, uh, we will have a board meeting sometime within the next two weeks. And uh, I anticipate launching phase two of this project uh, not later than mid-October. I just wanted to update you on the, uh, the ongoing affairs. Uh, I will tell you that uh, the it, it depends on how you look at the numbers. The, the liability that the war has with uh, funding this project has not changed significantly. The project cost has gone up to something close to $290,000. But the in-kind contribution from the state is $141,000. Uh, 
couldn't be happier to have them on board. And uh, we all, I think, owe a great deal of gratitude to the community of Yankee Town and was going this in this process. Do you have any questions? Ms. Cannon. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. explain to the public why he would want to decrease the request for the it's fairly simple. I don't. I think that there's uh, a great deal of demand for those funds, and we have uh, received uh, funding assistance from other sources. We do not need the monies that we applied for originally. Very simple. And the, the Restore Act Committee, in their judgment, uh, wants to sign funds elsewhere. They'll have the latitude to do that. He's not being greedy. Well said. Well said. Our, our, our objective is remediation in this situation. It has uh, the river is the heart and soul of those communities. And um, it has a an economic sense sense is very large in our life, but activity. I've been told right now that uh, nice weekend weather down the boat ramp in the highway 40 that they've had as many as 100 vehicles to cover part there. Uh, economic report we looked at some years ago suggested that those each one of those trips average about $150 in economic impact in the community. Uh, we don't see boaters bass fishing in the river anymore and that's a loss. Mm -hmm. Net loss. We want to fix that. Thank you very much for your time. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you said uh, Cliff Mud, y'all went on board with y'all. Yes, sir. Is it going to make any difference if Florida uh, River Management is going to take over Lincoln County? Hopefully, after the first two years, if Cliff Mud is not, is that going to make any difference in your project? Not that I've been told, sir, no. Uh, what we're getting from Swift Mud is in-kind participation uh, in labor, essentially in sample collection. Uh, they're committed to the project. Uh, and as far as jurisdiction, uh, well, they're still going to own half the river, I guess. Uh, or at least the half between citrus side. Citrus and Levy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then all the rest of it all to the Green Swamp. So I think they're on board for the duration. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you folks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, he explained it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Piaglet. Uh-huh. Good morning. Good morning. Here to discuss the uh, newly created incentives program that uh, we've uh, helped develop. Um, what you have before you is a single application and guide for those incentive programs that we've discussed. One being the economic development ad valorem tax exemptions program, and the other being the economic development fund. I'm a proponent of having one app, one guide, uh, you know, for the simple convenience factor of cutting down on the, the search time and, and keep it all in one place, and of course consolidating paperwork. So what you have before you is what I'm very pleased of as a draft that I think is uh, certainly executable. Um, it was, uh, you know, help from a uh, county attorney's office uh, certainly was integral in getting what you have before you. What we basically have now is, is kind of a set of questions that have come uh, that you uh, can certainly answer today at your leisure, or maybe, uh, you know, food, food for thought at a, a later time. But uh, there's six questions essentially that have come out of what you have before you. And so I can certainly at least give you a kind of a rundown of what we have in mind. I mean, the first and foremost is, of course, should applicants be able to apply for both, for both uh, incentive programs, the EDA and the EDF. Uh, of course, one of the clauses in there in both exemption and programs is the um, for the bonus points, so to speak, to get a higher score as local contractors or subcontractors. You know, do we want to consider a percentage, uh, you know, 60% of the work, 80% of the work be done locally as opposed to the, the remainder? Uh, third question is, do we ID targeted industry? Certainly our comprehensive plan that is in the process of being updated does have some industry listed. 
the state has their own perimeters through the uh, most common used incentive program, which is the QTI, Qualified Targeted Industry Program. They have uh, six industries identified. Career Source has their own. We even have our own that we've worked with the county on. Uh, one gap that is, uh, I don't want to say intentional, but it's just because of the nature of how it, it um, comes uh, to fruition is agriculture. You've got no taxes for the most part, um, whether it's a farm business or, or some other ag enterprise, most of them are exempt. And so whether you're looking at tax exemptions, you're not going to have that more tax. On the flip side, of course, is the tax increment for the EDF program. You're not going to have that increment. So is that something we want to consider? I will talk about that uh, you know, in a few minutes if, uh, if you desire. Uh, another one is, of course, who administers this program, and then the final, which might be a moot point based on the fact it's been adopted, is do we, you know, put funding in for this upcoming fiscal year, which will only be a matter of a week away, essentially. Um, so with that said, I don't know if you all want to go down each each question, or if you all want to just maybe consider it, uh, take some time. But uh, certainly, there's some I think that we can certainly answer today uh, for the sake of uh, expediting this process. I thought you had all the answers. I could, but uh, you know, certainly there's some things, uh, you know, straight, you know, when you get down to brass tacks, you know, for instance, having the ability to apply for both. You know, maybe if we had some of these projects, some of these large projects that were at a, at a point of, you know, finalizing, going operational, whatever, I could say, well, you've got more money to kind of work with, maybe it wouldn't you know, be a, a big deal to have them apply for both. Right now, it might be, let's just you know, use this as kind of a testing ground and see how this all plays out. Uh, our targeted industry, I think, is a simple one. I think simply uh, what we can use what the state's already proposed. Career source takes some of those, uh, for instance, your information technology, your health services, health sciences, um, and uh, things like financial institutions headquarters, you know, if you've got a big corporate headquarters that's looking to come into town, you know, those are considered, of course, we have things like aviation, which is also a state industry, uh, aerospace, maritime, um, agriculture is not in the state or career source listed, but certainly we know how, you know, huge of an industry that is locally, but again, not having that tax that's created. What I've encountered is I have not found one municipality or one local entity that incentivizes agriculture. Usually what happens is you go through the ag department. Um, and so you have anything from Michigan and Maryland that have uh, a microloan program or a young uh, farmer's grant program to others that are uh, you know, just simply your tax exemptions, your, your taxing districts basically, where we'll give them up to 15 years of tax abatements as they call it. Now of course in our case, you know, agriculture for the most part is tax exempt. That's something that maybe you could work with the Department of Agriculture on, you know, maybe having some of these programs that others do implement it. But I don't know if that necessarily has to fall on the onus of the county to, you know, come up with that money. Can I ask you that a little bit later? Yes. The tangible uh, tax, they have to pay that on a certain value, too. Uh, so I think we can look at, look at the tangible end of it more than the at the law. The real property, yeah. Right. yeah. And because I think my intent of this was to blanket the area with whatever could happen to fit a program, and I think that was the intent of the board, mm -hmm. and, and I know that's the intent the way this is written. Mm -hmm. But I think there's more than one, one way to skin a cat as some of the things say yesterday, mm -hmm. and I think that we need to be prepared to skin more than one cat with this. And that's one thing that Ann and I did discuss, um, which is leaving that possibility open. Uh, in the ordinance that's been drafted, which of course I haven't uh, referenced yet, but in the ordinance that's been drafted, that is one of the industries that's listed, and we have discussed creating essentially a third program, which would certainly be able to key it on maybe the, the tangible property taxes or things of that nature. So yeah, I mean, I'm open for, uh, you know, this isn't a, obviously my thing. This is, I want this to be, the, as you said, blinking as best we can the county industry, whether it's a small farm or obviously a headquarters that might come in. Because I think before this thing really gets off the ground, we're going to have more than more more things starting that's going to be ten jobs or less. Absolutely, and then over a course of time, probably in five to ten years, it's snowball it. Yeah, it's going to start to snowball yep. in there. I agree. And, um, 
I'm pleased with it. I really am. I'm glad, but I agree that I, I didn't want us to have ads slip through. I was just in that kind of situation. Okay, well, look at real property. That's what the majority of these incentive programs are based off of how to address that. And I like that. I do like that approach. Yeah, no. And certainly we can come up with, a, I guess you can call it a third option, or maybe we can but now, finesse this a little bit. But now, keeping in mind, we had a situation in the Peter Property Appraiser's office quite a few years ago with a, a business about tangible. And they would go to the extent of paying an attorney, and then they would finalize through the DAV before it actually came to the DAV. And I want to specifically spell out that the tangible is only for agriculture only not for anything worse commercial or industrial unless there's a special circumstance for that to make something happen. And I don't know just exactly could, how to make that work. Couldn't you say the only way you can you can qualify for tangible tax relief is if you're under a property tax exemption? You know what I mean? Because I think I mean I don't know Churches are exempt on everything. Yeah. So yes. that's, that's that popped into my mind whenever we talk about property taxes, that are they exempt on the tangible side? I think they are. So that'd be the only other entity I could think of that was. Yeah, there, there's some nonprofits that would definitely fall in that. You know, they can move their taxes out. Um, but I agree. I mean, I think this is a huge step. You know, and this is certainly getting uh, not even just in the ballpark, but winning some of these games. And I mean, I've got two projects that are the tale of two cities, so to speak, you got the one would certainly be tax exemption. They would be the jobs created alone would be a tax exemption. So you've got another that would be a nonprofit, essentially. Now, they would have a lot of jobs, but they're buying a whole lot of land if this thing goes forward, and it's the one-of-a-kind type of deal in the country. And so you've got two that are just as, as huge for this county, you know, two different scenarios, but one goes this way, one goes the other. So already we're in that. We're in that ballpark, and, and again, like I said, we're getting some home runs lined up. Uh, we can certainly look at a, at a third option, or maybe finesse this a little bit to include that tangible, so that we don't have to come up with a separate program. Right. Yeah, I think you can add. I think you can tie that in there. Okay. Yes, I think that's the appropriate deal. Okay. No, that's just my opinion. Several others. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Dave, yeah. do you have any idea when these applications are going to be ready to start handing out? Where they can well, I know I asked for permission to kind of approach on a draft basis. Uh, I guess it was last month, maybe two months ago. Um, and so I've already had discussions with several and have told them that we're, you know, we might be in the, the finalizing the process, uh, so to speak, but certainly we're going to need some paperwork to get together. And so I've got at least two or three that are, are kind of in the hopper, if you will. I mean, I'm, I'm really at your leisure. I'm, I'm ready to, to hit the ground more so than I already have. Uh, well, I just wanted to uh, a few of those questions. I didn't want to move too far ahead until we had some of this kind of sorted out. Because again, I wanted our best foot forward. You know, hit, hit the ground and do it right the first time around. Well, I'm ready to get going. Do we want to answer David's questions this after or this morning? Do we want to think about it and come back? I mean, I'm prepared to do whatever anybody wants. I mean, if you want to put, if y'all want to put the uh, tangible again and then bring it back and turn the tangible on. I'm prepared to let y'all throw the tangible in there at least. <laughs> okay. I think we need to throw it in there to go ahead with it and go ahead and get, to get it started. Awesome. This is going to be a terrible, terrible year for farmers in this county, and they're going to need all the breaks they can get. Yes, sir. Um, just not, not just farmers. No, I know what you're saying. I'm going to. Are we done? Yeah. Ms. Cannon. Mr. Chairman, what does EDF stand for? Economic Development Fund. Thank you so much. We, maybe after the next meeting, if David can move that, you know, if he has the time, do it as part of a workshop, because I still think that there's a lot of discussion that will take more time than a normal board meeting. Uh, the other question I have, David, is there any upfront funding until some of these incentives start falling in because we didn't budget for anything. Yeah. And, and I'm concerned about that. And if so, we need to make those 
adjustments too, and that can be part of the workshop if there's any upfront funding for what we are. Texting, yeah, tax exemptions are, are a tough one because again, by state statute, they have to submit prior to the, the work being done. The EDF that might actually uh, be a moot point, it, we would have the funding in place essentially because they would have had to have paid their, you know, they would have had to have gone on the tax rolls, paid their taxes, and so forth. Not in all these situations, obviously, the act being the prime example, but in some of these that I'm dealing with, if they were to go for today, that money would be in there. You wouldn't have to worry about that money, uh, but it would be for some of these other ones. They would pay, and we just grab check Yeah, back. basically a rebate, I guess that's what I look at. So. Yes, yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, we have to develop another chart for them. If, if you look in your... Yeah, just a third page of, of a new formula, essentially. There's the formula there. We have to develop another one with, with a different criteria. And, and all of these are subject to today, subs or the, the contractor themselves that are based in the county versus, you know, not necessarily from a capital investment, but the, just a numbers game. You know, you had 10 employees, seven of which were county, you know, subs or the contractor himself or herself. I guess you go on, based on the overall cost of the project, how much of it did you do local and how much did you do? Or they could be flexible and let the applicant tell you how they figure that they businesses here but also you yeah. have the current businesses that has here too mm -hmm. and I think that needs to be a little bit more of a stronghold fixed for lack of that word. Mm -hmm. I know there's probably some things that you probably not going to get out there that you still have to go out and kind of come around for. I mean it's just one of those give and take situations and I don't know just exactly how to say the percentage on okay. that. That's, that's why I was careful when I prepared this because I didn't want to close any doors, but certainly the intent was to take care of us, the who's already here before we look outside, whether it's the employee or the contractor or whatever. So. And I think it would be a good idea to um, have the applicant come in and say, hey, this is Uh, 
is structured out that what this whole thing is structured by is that approach so that would work and i and, and i think we do need to set up a workshop because all of this is actually bringing in more than that you know, well, that's what I say today wouldn't have been good because we had in negotiation a lot of things today. But after the next meeting or the one after that, depending on how far along we get. And then we might have lost a year of our 10 year commitment. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm ready to make things happen. I do have that clock, clock ticking thing. I understand that. we need to do it right. We need to do it. But yeah. Keep that in mind, guys. We've, we've lost a year. Right. Let's do it after our next. Workshop on and, and we've already got six. I'm sorry. We'll have a workshop October 6th. Um, everybody take the stuff home, look at it, write down any questions you have. So we can present them that day. And then I think at that point we need to be ready to act. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. West. Morning, y'all. Morning. Morning. I'm here from the 911 addressing office to uh, have a chair. Really? Thank you. On our uh, yearly centurion maintenance and uh, evergreen software. Twenty-six thousand. The, the grants now come directly from the uh, 911 board, and they pay the thing so we don't have to bring it through the county and back out to the. Thank you, motion to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Thank you. Carries. Thank you. All right, county coordinator. Snappy. <laughs> okay, the first out of my hand is we received a letter from the city of Canyon Springs, and this is kind of similar to what we've done, you know, at Cedar Key or something, but uh, they're requesting uh, approval of the board to accommodate the city of Canyon Springs by uh, waiving the dumping fees for a city cleanup event. Uh, on October 3rd. The letter says we are requesting that the dumping fees for waste pro USAB way for the dumping of the refuge that is collected for our city cleanup, which will be held on October 3rd. Uh, they have volunteers that will be picking up trash and debris and uh, waste pro is providing a dumpster and hauling it and all of that. So they just asked for that. That be waiting for that day for that October 3rd. I'm making a motion to make the fees because they're going to do all that and all the labor and all the equipment and all. We got a second. We got a Can we get a third? I'm in favor. <laughs> all right, we have a motion by Commissioner Jordan and a second by Commissioner Rooks. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I mean, all the expenses incurred is taking in some trash that we're not charging for. So. And I would also like to ask that they be in the landfill and let them know which vehicles are coming and about what time that way every, everybody's on board is going to be working that day. And I know you want to get rid of it and take care of it. Right. In fact, we probably won't come in that, that October right. 3rd. Probably the day, but yeah, they don't have a, a yeah. notification for the scale of house. Um, the second, the second, the second, the second, we had a motion and a second, is there any further discussion? <laughs> All in uh, favor, please leave by saying aye. Uh, 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 carries. Uh, the next item I have is I'm asking uh, for the approval to remove the interim from John McDonald's job title 
and place him as director of emergency management. Uh, John has got some reorganization ideas he wants to put in place out there, and he's been the interim. Well, he's actually been out there since 2004 and basically serving as the assistant emergency management director, even though he was funded by uh, Progress Energy as our EP rep, but that funding has gone away. But uh, he's done a good job through the uh, potential of the tropical storm, and he's done good with the flooding issues and meeting with the people down there and working with staff. And, we have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. The next item I have is uh, we had a request from Ms. Linda Puget uh, for the board to send a letter to them uh, allowing them to send out tax deed warning letters on impending tax deed applications for uh, past key taxes going back as far as 2009. A lot of times that tax deed one letter will spur people to catch up and pay up uh, before it goes through to a tax deed sale. It's better than an alternative. Right. Um, I do have one correction because uh, it reads the board tax measures request that you send a tax debt. Yes, I saw that. Sorry Sorry we that. change that to deed so we don't scare people. Right. <laughs> Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay, and it was time for it was time for us to uh, send out RFPs uh, to award uh, uh, the bid for auctioneering services. Uh, we had only one uh, respond to that, and that's Atkins Realty and Auction which has been our auctioneer since 2009. And they were, that was a three-year contract with a three-year uh, uh, renewal, so we've gone through that. So we need to get an auctioneer in place uh, for a surplus auction, as well as hopefully we will have some, well, we do have some properties uh, and we ask specifically that a realtor be part of that, that they have the license. And they have sold a piece online for us on real estate. Over in Gilchrist, <coughs> you're not too long ago, so uh, they have been really good. And I recommend that we uh, uh, respond to that, and then there'll be a contract coming to Ms. Brown and we'll run back to y'all. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those? Resources. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to present the proposed privacy policies and procedures as they pertain to the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, the County HIPAA policy, which was originally adopted in 2003. And we've had some changes, or there were some changes with the Code of Federal, federal Regulations. And we're um, updating our policy to reflect those changes in the code. Um, the proposed, the document <clears throat> that I presented is part of the benefit administration guide that Public Risk Management of Florida provided for us. So they actually prepared the document. And um, this, of course, Ms. Brown <coughs> um, reviewed it and upon its adoption by the board, then there'll be training for staff members. And there is one page, addendum A, that has not been finalized. So I'll need a couple more days to finish addendum A, and then I'd like to get you know, Karen's signature on it once that addendum A is, is finalized. So you just need a motion to have the German signature once mm -hmm. it's done? Yes, sir, to approve the new HIPAA policy. This is the same HIPAA policy then, except for year and year, but just a little more added to it. Yes, it's going from 15, from a 15 page document. They're about, they're about 70 pages. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was fun reading. <laughs> Motion that today. Second. by Commissioner Dorn, second by Commissioner Rockmix. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Yes, ma'am. If she's going to change or add things, should it be to include what the changes are going to be? The uh, updating the addendum A, if, if you want to say. So that's a Oh, wow, they match the dinner. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 This morning, the first one we do the, the last one first is regards to our current contract with University Board of Trustees. We originally signed this contract two years ago for medical director oversight for the County EMS. And we're coming up on our two year renewal. At this time, um, Dr. Jones is here, our primary medical director with Dr. Tindall from Shands US. And um, a couple of things he'd like to mention. Okay. If you don't know me yet, um, I'm Jason Jones. I'm medical director of uh, Levy County Emergency Medical Services. I'm also a board certified uh, ER doc at Chance UI. Uh, I just want to start by saying, so when you talk with other medical directors around the country, a lot of us worry about something called the rural paradox. And the rural paradox says that we know that if you live in a rural county and you pick up the phone and call 911 for emergency, you're much more likely to be a whole lot sicker than your counterpart in an urban center, and you're much more likely uh, to have a really long transport to the hospital. And so what that means is the paramedics in a rural setting would likely need to be prepared to do a whole lot more and have to know a whole lot more than paramedics who are close to a hospital. Um, the paradox is that in a lot of rural places across the country, those, those paramedics and those EMTs don't have the training, don't have the equipment, don't have the funding to take care of that mission. And as a result, um, those, those people suffer, they get bad medical care. Um, and I wanted to credit this board, um, over my time here, that you guys have said, this is not okay in County. Maybe County citizens, you guys have advocated for your, for your districts and your citizens by saying, every life matters in Maybe County. Every person does, deserves the best medical care. And no one should get substandard medical care in Maybe County. And you've, um, you've stood behind that, you've held us very accountable. And so, two years ago, the County made a partnership with Shanzua, and it's been one of the most um, fulfilling experiences in my life getting to know the people of the County. We've made a lot of really exciting changes. So just to list off some of the, the, the highlights. So now, uh, when a paramedic or an EMT has a difficult case, 24 hours a day, they can call directly to a, a Shans ER doctor and talk out the case. Is there anything else I can do to save that person's life? If they think someone's having a heart attack, they can now beam an EKG directly to our ER doctors and know instantaneously, is this a heart attack, is this not a heart attack, and know what to do. Um, as far as some of the equipment we've been, we've been able to get, um, thanks to this board, thanks to the taxpayers of Levy County, uh, we now have some mechanical CPR devices. So what we know is, I don't care if you are Arnold Schwarzenegger, you cannot do great CPR all the way to the hospital. <laughs> mechanical CPR ensures that citizens get the absolute best CPR and the best chance of saving their life. Um, we've also gotten IV pumps on every single ambulance, and what that says is when we have to give critical medicines to save a life, we have very precise dosing. And this is especially important in kids who are tiny and a little overdose is a big deal in kids. But we know we can give the exact right dose to every citizen. Um, there, the, the, there's a long list of things uh, that we've been able to get. Um, regarding dispatch, I'm, I'm sorry that Mr. Williams is no longer here, but so the, the old dispatch in Levy County was kind of made up as you go along. What we've changed through something called emergency medical dispatch it is the international gold standard for dispatch. And one thing I wanted to clear up is when you call, when we're asking those questions, an ambulance is already coming. We're trying to figure out is there anything we can do to save your life before we get there and to see do we need more ambulances? Do we need a, a more brisk response to your emergency? That's why we're asking these questions. We're not trying to be difficult when you're in an emergency. Um, it is the only dispatch service in the entire world that has been proven scientifically to save lives over a home birth dispatch. So it's a big deal. Um, as far as training, I've had the pleasure, thanks to the resources of Shans UF, 
uh, we've been able to train with Paradise. I meet with them multiple times a month, every month. We've trained on um, the, the birthday simulator. We've done pediatric scenarios, trauma scenarios. You can think of an emergency. We've probably put our Paradise and EMTs through the ring. Um, so I think it's been a very fruitful partnership. I think we've been able to greatly increase the, the standard of care for medical care in Lincoln County. And that is a great uh, credit to the, the standards you guys have helped us to. I think that's a great idea. So I think the standard EMD format is not to do that, but I think that's a great idea to say, hey, the ambulance is already coming. Yes, yes. that shouldn't take too long to say, and it would better handle them. So, so we, we still have room to improve. Uh, we have a big mission. Levy County is the ninth largest county in the state. It's the size of Rhode Island. That's a lot of territory here. Yeah. Anyone who calls 911 anywhere. But we're making great strides. Uh, and so, We've had a partnership for two years. Our goal is to be here for as long as you'll have us and to keep investing in these County. But we're here today to ask for a few more years to continue this partnership. Thank you. I think I asked you just one time before in the meeting this same question. If you rated IMS or if you stand there today, what would you rate response time and the medical I think the response time is an A, and we're working on that. I think our, our medical care is a plus. I think you get the same medical care you would in any urban center in Florida or anywhere across the country now. And yes. the response time is A. See, A, A minus, we're working hard. It's a huge town, and our public volume has gone up a whole lot. Uh, a lot of more people are calling 911, uh, but we're adding new ambulances and new stations so we can get to you wherever you are. Uh, and we're, we are beating our peers across the state, but in similar settings, we're trying to get where we beat, beat people no matter what you are. That's hard to do. So, you got a pretty tough job. Yes, you do. And you know, so, also keep in mind that with this new radio system, it's also going to be a collection of data that shows you where your head is, how volume the areas are. That way, we don't have resources there in the capital improvement fund. We can take and allocate resources there later on once we get funds there available. So, that's also going to be a big improvement all the way across because that's the intent. Isn't that Absolutely. Right? Absolutely, that is, and that'll help us a lot know where where people are, are calling 911 from. So, I mean, it's a slow, yeah. it's a slow moving process, but everything is being done in a way to make things better in the end result. So, one, one last point is uh, we also have all new protocols which are based on kind of national best practices, not kind of making it up as we go along. This is what the, the smartest people in, in our, our area say is the right thing to do. So, trying to bring that up as we can. Lastly, every paramedic has my email and my, my phone number, but uh, for anyone who wants to contact me directly, my email address is jasonjones at ufl.edu, um, or find me on the website. I, I'm the yard doctor, I'm up all hours of the night, so I'll answer. Yes, sir. Thank you for recognizing me, Mr. Chairman, uh, County Commissioners. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of UF and Shans and the College of Medicine, I just want to say that it was really a privilege to partner this way. Um, bringing Jason Jones on board here um, has really been a, a tremendous experience. Um, he won't say this, but I could really vouch for his dedication and what he's actually done. Um, I get the privilege of actually seeing uh, the paramedics come to the emergency department when I work, and I talk to them. I ask them, how are things? What's happening? Um, and I have to tell you that they're a group and a team of folks you just really ought to be proud of. Uh, some of the saves that have actually occurred um, over time in the county, I think all due to the, the kind of education that we've been able to provide. Um, what I want to really tell you too, that when you get uh, Jason Jones here, um, he is the sort of the tip of the spear of a team of people that are really behind this process in terms of education. Um, and as he suggested to you, this is, uh, it's not easy to do. 
come, it's a very challenging process when you look at pre-hospital care, especially in more rural settings. Uh, and to be able to achieve this has actually been something that, that I think has been outstanding. Uh, we love this partnership. Uh, I think it's a privilege to do it. Um, it's a privilege for us to be able to have uh, an institution like UF really extend its support to the community in this way. Um, and I just wanted to stand here to let you know that we at the University of Florida and the Chans will do everything to continue to support the contract in this way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I can tell you one thing. You have my little bitty fellow have all our knowledge with you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grant. Sir, the mechanical uh, CPR you were talking about, is that the modern version of the old thumper we used to use back in the 80s? <laughs> it, it is the Ferraris, the Model T, but yes, it's, uh, it, it's a Lucas device. And the neat thing about it is not only does it, but it also has a suction cup, so it expands the chest, so you get good, good circulation and your heart's not beating. Also, the, the transmission of EKGs, that's the old Life Pack 3 upgrade? <laughs> that's a similar concept. Yeah. Uh, I think now it's the Life Pack 15, so, so much fancier, but it's, it's neat. When I, when I worked in the emergency department at Chan's, um, as soon as a paramedic has an EKG, if they want to send it to me, it pops up on my screen. We almost we can't minimize it with saying I've seen it and I think this is a heart attack or not a heart attack. So it's it's great. And it gives a lot of comfort to our paramedics who are in a tough spot. So, Sammy, you know, yeah, I've been away from it for about 30 years. You want to come back? <laughs> no, I don't think not at my age. Well, fair enough. Are these the gentlemen we have to thank? for having Mrs. Rooks with us today? Absolutely. So Fantastic. Good to hear. So we're thrilled to have her. Very yeah, important. we're glad to have her. Yeah. And he'll talk to you if he's seen you in the emergency room. <laughs> 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 I met her here. He got a lot of knowledge that was me. <laughs> um, I think I was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> 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 let's turn it over to the chief. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Brooks. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion is second by Commissioner Rock Meeks. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All in favor. All right. Next in agenda item requesting the board's approval to ratify acceptance and assistance to firefighter act grant to amount to fifty thousand four hundred and ninety six from the Department of Homeland Security for a health and wellness program. On top of this request, I'm also requesting the board's approval for the chairman to sign the assurances of non-construction programs along with this grant program. The match is $2,500, and that will come out of the capital put in line item within the fire budget for 2015-2016. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Yes, sir, Ms. Sheffield. How much of this is exercise equipment and how much is physical exam? Roughly about $24,000 is in equipment, sir, and the remainder is in physicals. So half and half? half roughly half and half. And it's what kind of equipment? Physical fitness equipment, sir. Right now, treadmills, treadmill, 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 it was a trick, a trick. And two treadmills, two exercise bikes with bicycles, um, a Unidon bike, two Unidon bikes, a stair stepper, and the, uh, I think, a, a multi, multi station gym as well, sir. This is the same grant package we've applied for two years in a row now. So this is the first year we did not receive a high enough score to be awarded the grant. The second year, obviously, this, this package we were awarded this time. Ms. Cannon. This project we've worked on. Right. Ms. Cannon, is this mandatory? Uh, for your employees? For our physicals, yes, ma'am. Our physicals are men, and this is just to help the wellness program keep our employees the healthiest possible because our 
cost to have an employee sick is a greater cost to the overall citizens, and I think by having an employee sick, I like help them with lifting heavy patients and keeps them warm. Okay. Is that only then the Department of Homeland Security manager is the is the administrator, administrator of the grant programs. Is it only for is it mandatory for EMS and fire? Very well. Only or is it mandatory for all county employees? Mr. I can tell you and the sheriff down about here. It's mandatory for the sheriff's department to take the physical fitness test every year by FTLU standards. It's mandatory for the Department of Forestry hmm. to take the physical and do a physical fitness test every year. Uh, and I'm not sure if the federal, the federal department hmm. does, does the federal and my question is, I, I'm not a question, I know it's going to be all this is going to be available to all those people that have to take all these physical exams to get requalified, am I correct? Yes, sir. Did I answer your question, Ms. Cannon? No, sir. Because the next, like your secretaries, it said the last The county does not have mandatory. County does, county does not have mandatory. That's my benefit. It will be available to them, but we are not going to be. I agree. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was going to ask, is this in conjunction with the program for firefighters to eliminate the cardiac arrest because you and, and with the paramedics to the federal program didn't we have a firefighter who like out of Otter Creek died after a day of training that was years ago years ago for my time yes that is one of the highest death rates um, for firefighters is cardiac arrest um, for coming off duty and after a major event so this is one of the Positive for our employees as well. That is, um, cardiac and cancer is one of the leading causes of death in firefighters at this point in time. Chief, you will have a certified instructor, correct? Yes, sir. It's also included. Yes, sir. That as well. That certified career fitness training program. Okay. Excuse me. So, what happens to those that fail the test? We do not have a mandatory physical fitness program now within our. Department or our county agency. This is for them to help encourage them to become a healthier employee with the health and wellness program. Where are they getting? I think uh, to answer your question on the other levels, the people go into like remediation and you get a chance to train yourself. Kind of like the military. Very different chance. If they if they fail out, then they're released and they're going to retire. Whatever. Mr. Witt. What what a, what exercise equipment was it again? Two treadmills or something? I would have to, before you document that, Mr. Reed, I'd have to send you exactly what we're getting before you put that in the newspaper so you have it correct. So I'll go ahead and send that information to you. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Reed, I'll move that we approve the motion to approve the motion to approve the motion to approve the motion to approve the motion capital purchases for these funds will be coming out of the 2015-2016 budget year. This time we're requesting approval to purchase eight self-contained breathing apparatus for $44,509.80. Four powerless stretchers. These are the same stretchers we currently use. Correction, three powerless stretchers at $50,414.94. One of those three is a replacement from the destroyed ambulance the dispatcher was located in the during that accident. Next item on this agenda is four stair chairs, striker stair chairs for $10,509.78. And as well, one of those was destroyed in the ambulance crash. As well as by taking advantage of improving, approving this now, I'll be able to say have a 3% reduction, I'm sorry, eliminate having a 3% cost increase after October 1. So that would be saving on the stretchers roughly $1,800 by having boards do this approval now so we can signature on that item to be purchased. As an extra year budget? Yes, sir. These are all planned purchases of our 15-16 budget year coming out of the existing 
fire and MS budget assessment programs. Now, do you have these, David, on a rotation where you rotate at the two years? Yes, four sir. Years? Our, our powerless directors have a life expectancy of seven years. So when I came on, that would be the, the second bullet item, sir. Mm -hmm. Have a life expectancy of seven years. So when I came on board, we started purchasing, purchasing these two at a time. So after my tenure here, whoever comes in behind me isn't tasked with having to purchase 11 stretchers at one time and putting that income burden on the board. So now we're going to purchase two at a time throughout the years. So this will be our last year for the next five to seven years before we start purchasing stretchers again. And then we have another rotation of stair chairs in our next year, 16, 17 budget year, to do that rotation out. And then we'll complete those stair chairs for 10 years. So then when we come up for cycle, life cycle, and have you purchase them two at a time instead of purchasing 11 at a time trying to come up with a considerable large fiscal amount of money at one time. David, go back to the first thing about the SCBAs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With our new sprinter ambulances that we currently use, we put self-contained breathing apparatuses in those, and each unit gets two self-contained breathing apparatus that takes the first four. You know, we'll have four additional units for spares because at this point we don't have spare units. So that gives four spare units within the system. So what's the law that you see of those? It um, depends on when the National Fire Protection Association changes their standards. Um, it's an industry standard. It's not the National Fire Protection Police Association, but it's, it is an association that we follow their standards when we're replacing our equipment. So depends on, there's several different Five to five to eight years. Sir, I think. They, just, they just rotated the new standard out last year. But we have maintained we have a maintenance agreement with those as well, so they're maintained every year. Fit testing occurs every year on all of our employees as well. So we maintain and have service contracts on those. Is this a piece of equipment that has to be on the ambulance? That's how we're doing it for our school. Dual certified employees that have to have self clean green after us in order to fight the structure fires, any kind, any kind of fire for that matter, vehicle fire, dumpster fire, would be an immediately dangerous to life and health environment. So if we didn't have one, we'd have to show that you not necessarily no, we would not necessarily show that would be as just we, we, that crew that's on that ambulance would not verify the fire if one occurred and they responded to one of the system or agency. What's the pleasure of the board? Second by Commissioner Joyner. Is there any further discussion? I would, I would like to have one thing. So if we can maybe make an amendment to that motion. We have our old stretchers that we'd like to trade in on those as well. They gave us a four hundred fifty dollar trade in value on those. I would put it in the agenda. But while we're here, I'd like to request approval to use those as a trade in. Old off, those are old office types of these stretchers. Okay, and I'll make and I'll amend the motion to reflect trade in. Thank you, sir. Does your second reflect that amendment? No, I will. I'm going to do it. Two stretcher. Two. We can't trade them in on the destroyed stretcher, but the two replacement stretchers we can. Are we going to try to keep the destroyed stretcher? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're training. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The insurance is taking it. All right. Motion and second. Is there any further discussion? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Gaithman. Sometime when they, they put this in here, it says purchase equipment for the department. Could you enumerate so we know what you're talking about before you tell us and we have to write 900 miles an hour? Please, sir? Yes, ma'am. I will I'll speak with, with them. Thank you. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Carries. Next agenda item is part of our capital improvement program. Our replacement of ambulances, requesting board's approval to purchase two Type 3 ambulances off the Florida Sheriff's Association bid contract. 
total amount is $297,264. And that is as of capital projects, capital, I'm sorry, capital line items within the EMS assessment fund for 2015-2016 budget year. These are planned purchases. Mm -hmm. Miss Cannon. Mr. Chairman, what type of our existing ambulance Our exist we have a mix of Ford F four fifties and a majority of our units now are the Sprinter model type three ambulances. This will bring us into the seventh and eighth Sprinter model that we have now in service. Who are you the other day? We, um, <laughs> so this is the same rotation as I'm doing with the majority of our high dollar capital items is purchasing two of the so when it comes time for rotation, we're not hit with a million dollar budget trying to find scramble for money to buy ambulances. So it's re replacing every two years. And with the destroyed ambulance, that puts us right in line because we have an odd number of 11 ambulances total in our, in our system. So that puts us an odd number out, which puts us right where we need to be now. For our, like rotation of our reading stuff. David, how many miles out the whole mountain two years? <laughs> hundred um the ambulance was destroyed was right at a hundred thousand miles at two years. Hundred thousand at two years? Mm -hmm. It's kind of low. Our plan with working with Charlie Bedford um, was to bring them out at five years, two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand miles and put them off the road at five years and start a recycling or rechassing program at that point in time. Wait. Do you have seven ambulances on the road right now? We have not put the seventh one in service as of yet. When is that going in service? As soon as we finish the construction project. As soon as we can finish, finish as soon as we finish the construction project at the Morrison Power Station. That's what's going. On. When will that be? As soon as we finish the construction project. Well, I wouldn't even estimate to finish the construction project. October, November, December. It'll be in the, between October and November, sir. Good. Again, a motion and a second. Brock's giving out a voice over here. Um, yeah, he can't. That, that was um, <laughs> so we had a motion by Commissioner Stevens, second by Commissioner Rock Meeks. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please say by the saying aye. Uh, opposed? Thank you. Uh, we <coughs> you said me, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioners. I appreciate the renewal and the contract with the University of Florida. They have made vast improvements in our service and the community for support. I appreciate your support and that. Thank you. It was a good day for Levy County. Construction and maintenance, Mr. Jones. Maintenance, solid waste. Y'all won't change it to the dump so you can go up the front. I'll second. I'll second. Morning, morning. Uh, requesting approval for uh, purchasing a tool truck for our department under the state board sheriff association uh, state bid uh, we were trying to lift the trucks by to the next budget year um, but we've been unable to do is charlie's resurrected these trucks from the bed and uh, we've been lucky enough to uh, have the sheriff's office transfer some trucks to us from uh, but they're just we get more, more out and uh, we're trying to uh, we went through our budget and see if we could try to get this together with uh, some of the ACs and stuff that we didn't have in the county that we were able to upkeep. Um, so we were kind of went through that money. So this is money that you saved throughout the budget year? Right, this year's budget. 
Maybe you all right come on, we won't take it out of this year's budget. Yes, sir. We'll make a motion to approve the purchase. Yes, we'll do it. Second. Is there any further discussion? Sheffield, what? how much trucks? How much money? Um, this one's the Florida Sheriff's State bid. Um, it's $32,179. Um, what it is, we went through the, uh, normally you could try to order one. It takes six to nine months to try to get a truck. Um, these are trucks that have already been built and they're under state bid um, through the Florida Sheriff's Association. Um, so it actually saves the county money as it comes because you don't have to bid it out. And these trucks are already built. So what I did is I already, uh, I had to, you have a, a number that you can call with all these different uh, agencies and see who has a truck on the lot. Right. And these were one of them that had one on the lot. I and, just wonder what kind of it's. Right. It's a uh, full body bed, white. Cab, really? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, single cab. Uh, pretty right. pretty basic, kind of a, a work truck. It's not all the bells and whistles. And a service and body or just service a service body? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Jimmy, are you going to be able to have it by September 30th? I'm hoping. Um, I, I, I try to go out on a limb a little bit and ask them if it was possible to get it approved, what would the lead time be? Um, they said they had them on the lot. They couldn't guarantee it past Wednesday, which is tomorrow, because um, a lot of counties are, are purchasing things that they have monies available towards the end of the budget year. Um, and this is something that he said that he could guarantee until tomorrow. So you'll run out there and tell him. Yeah, uh, you'll leave here and go pick it up so you'll have it. It's possible. It's in, I believe, uh, Seabrook. Mm -hmm. oh. right. oh. <laughs> Alan J. Fleet Sales. Yeah, Alan. Hey, all down there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know if she brings that, sir. I know where it's oh. at. Right. Yeah. 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 After the water drive, you get it. Yeah. 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 Just drive on the mold with the leaf. All right, all right. <laughs> I don't think I want it. Thank you, Will. Uh, yeah. We get a motion on it. I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. We got a motion to say, I think Mike already made the motion. Yeah. <coughs> you never get a second. Okay, well, that was simple. And once again, I've been very appreciative of my impact and what you got here on the trucks. All right. All in favor, please see by saying aye. 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 Man, I'm trying to go. You're dragging that out. We're making jokes. I'm going to you somewhere around me. Y'all drive me back to the car. Solid waste. Mr. Hastings, how are you this morning? You know you're about done. Benny asked me to tell us earlier this morning. So I tried to delegate it over to the police. I turned to Dave Meeks and asked him to come up here. We never got out here. He got so nervous, I thought he was going to retire. <laughs> Now, Benny has requested me, though, to ask the approval of the board for the Lee County Service Agreement with the North Florida Central uh, Planning Council. We can get approval on that. Just taking the place of an old agreement with the old man. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all carries. Thank you, sir. All that for that. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. All right, we have reached our second public comment section. Does anyone would like to come forward for public comment? Ms. Tony Collins. I'll make one. I'm sorry to have to report that the Lee County Historical Society fell, uh, did not fall into the parameters to receive the grant that we uh, applied for for the uh, survey of the underwater. Uh, archaeological survey activity. They felt that the grant was too staff recommended not to, uh, to fund it. Um, they felt it was too broad. Um, they didn't feel that the support from CDP was there, which it was not, because I wasn't able to get a letter of support from them. Um, so the Historical Society will proceed. Uh, we, we want to form a coalition between the Cedar Key Art Center and a group in Citrus County to build a replica of the Helen Den to place on the pro uh, property that the Historical Society bought out of State Road 24 um, and County Road 347. There will also be a kiosk with the history of the town of Lucas and the Tillman Cypress Company and also the history of the Helen Den. <laughs> um, 
I find it very interesting that Levy County has not received a historic preservation grant since 2002. And I'm wondering what might be going on. So a lot of the smaller counties were also not funded. But there was no problem with you know, Miami-Dade, Broward, Orange, uh, you know, Santa Rosa. There was an awful lot of money um, that was, or grants that were approved for churches and religious organizations, which I found very interesting. There were eight of them. Repair windows in a church over in St. Augustine. And, um, couldn't get a good explanation. Were they historic? Or? Uh, well, yes, some of them were. Okay. Um, when, when I tried to get a grant for the Adamsville Community Church, the AME Church, from East of Chico, I was told flat out, no. No money for anything religious. Evidently, the philosophy has changed. It's very hard. Uh, I know you're, Rob, you don't know what I went through trying to get answers out of both the grant committee and um, uh, just historic preservation itself. And I've worked, I've known, and I've worked with quite a few of the people up there. And the attitude and the philosophy is ugly. So, Anyway, let's hope somebody in the county will be able to get a historic preservation grant. So you're not going to reapply. Oh, don't do that again? Okay. Why? I mean, I had received a telephone call at 2.30 the day before they ranked and reviewed the applications to say it was deficient. And I was stunned. I said, well, couldn't, couldn't you have called me a little earlier so we could have talked about it? And the other thing was, I was up there uh, two months earlier spoke with the grant coordinator. He never said a word. So I don't I don't know what's going on. I'm glad you all have I'm, sorry, I'm glad you all have a, a grant cover. And uh, I'm gonna sit with Trisha. So if anybody from the county comes up with anything to go to historic preservation, I'll work with her and we'll we'll try and figure it out. But as a ready county, I mean they weren't even impressed that we had an eight thousand dollar match for a thirty three thousand dollar grant. That didn't, didn't mean anything to them. They wouldn't consider the land that we purchased as part of a uh, uh, the match. I said, no, he did that before you submitted the grant. Yeah, but it is part of the project. So, I don't know. What can I say? Ms. Tony, before you sit down, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. What date is it that we have the ride you mean to tell me you're not cooking? No, ma'am. I'm going to double cook. I probably okay. be there today. Yes, it's Saturday the 24th. I do want to make one comment to you all. We have been extremely fortunate. Those of you who have ever attended or are aware of the um, Wild Hog Canoe Race, um, the, you know, Keith Maynard has taken it over. He just finished the third year. And Keith was instrumental in purchasing the property where the Wild Hog Canoe Race ends. It's on US 1998 in the Wapasatsa Village. It's 4.1 acre parcel of land. And Keith and several of his um, uh, people he works with have formed a separate corporation, the Gothamic Wild Hog Canoe Race. And so the property is in that name. Everything connected to the wild hog race is being shifted over to the corporation. Okay, and I'm one of the members of that. Does the blue does the building go with the land? Building goes with it too. We had a um, sort of a christening luncheon on Saturday, and um, they all talked about the plans that they have for that building, which means we're going to have to come see you all because um, you know it's been that gas station has been out of business for what, 30, 40 years. Uh, Keith did receive from both the federal government and the state government uh, the certificates that every that property is clear. There's no problem from any fuel Super that may have seeped out or, or contaminated ground. Um, the corporation is a 501c3. Okay, so uh, we'll be approaching Mr. Barker to have it taken off the tax rolls. Um, what else? It's just, it's, it's going to be great. And the other thing I'm working on, and I may as well tell you, since I don't have that much to, to work on now with the Grand Island Cedar Key, there is a caboose in Calpena that you all, anyone who's ever fished and has gone down County Road 326, 
you see it sitting out there in the field. It's an Atlantic coastline caboose. And if I have my way, it will be up on the property for the wild hog canoe race, and it will be refurbished, and it could make a wonderful Levy County Welcome Center. So, if any of you know David Howard from Cedar Key, or his daughter Savannah, who is actually the owner of the caboose, convince them that it needs to, to happen. Savannah's a 10th grader at Cedar Key, and her daddy bought her that the day she was born. She's not right ready to give it up yet. <laughs> All right, anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to Commissioner Reports. Commissioner Jordan. Mr. Chairman, not my suggestion here. Can I get one of the other commissioners to uh, give us a date on the wild beast feast and the Oscar Haven Oscar and the Education Foundation? All three of them. If any of y'all have them, you need to be good. October 17th. Yeah. The 17th. And the Beast Feast is the 24th. It's the same day as the ride. The Beast Feast is the 24th of October. I know that. The same day as the. As the ride. And the Fall Lodge Benefiting Haven Hospice. 17th. I think it's on the 17th. It is. 
And that, that's going to be in a cold city this year, am I correct? Yes. Yes. Shamrock. Is that the it's, there? It's right. Shamrock. The location of Shamrock. Do you have anybody have a time on that? Did you say October 17th? Yes. Yes. I can see The Seafood Festival is the 17th and 18th. Busy weekend. October's busy. What about the beach beach with the... Uh, 24. 24. Got that. Got the 17th. Out the hospital. Then what else do we have? The Seafood Festival, the summer says, is on the 17th. 17th and 18th. Of October? Yep. Mm -hmm. 17th. Um, the third is the taste of Cedar Key. So you all need to come out. There's going to be a General Motors club from Ocala who will have their cars on display, and also two um, cl British classic car clubs from Brooksville. What day was that, Miss John? It's Saturday, October the third, and we will be displaying our cars in front of the firehouse. Cedar Key. Cedar Key. Yeah, the taste of Cedar Key is 11.30 to 1.30. Nanny, I was not at church Sunday, but I will be on the same day as the beach beach. It's the same day as the beach beach, the same day as the rides provide. I don't know if they changed or not. Oh, am I bad? I had to move kind of last Sunday and I did not go to church, so I can't. But I will send the date. I will call up there and get it put on the board. Mm -hmm. the, this is the third. Pretty sure it's the third. Yes, it's, it's the third. Or yeah. Or something. Yeah. Saturday the third. What you got? Peanut butter. What you got? Um, I mean, um, I do have one motion, I one item, agenda item, I need to cover under my commission reports. Um, look, seeking approval to. Uh, Approve Mr. Skipper Henderson remaining on the value adjustment board. Can I get a motion? I'll make I got a motion. I got a motion. I got a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed. While we're on that matter, value adjustment board over oh, right here. Uh, we have, looks like one petitioner with three parcels of land. Um, we will schedule our organizational meeting on October 6th at 8.30 a.m. That will be before our next board meeting. That's when we will select the chairman and vice chairman, I believe. Um, we will be allowed to have our meetings anytime after October 14th. So we have selected October 19th, which is Monday, as the hearing day to hear the, uh, hear the argument for uh, the plaintiff, if you will. Uh, this morning, not really matters, but for informational purposes, uh, the school board is scheduled to uh, reappoint our school board member Chris Cowart and Natalie Thomas as their representatives on the meeting. So that's really all I have. There is a meeting Thursday morning at Cedar Key at the museum for uh, planning, a visioning session, if you will, where we think the museum ought to go, we know how they should improve. Uh, I am serving on that as the chairman. Um, so, look forward to seeing you there, parents. Public meeting is Wednesday evening from 7 to 9. The meeting on Thursday is at the Kirkpatrick. So I'll be serving with you. Yes, ma'am. No, just a 10-year plan. Yeah, a 10-year plan. What they can improve, what kind of uh, what would they like? What would we like to see them bring in as exhibits? I guess I really don't know. I'll find out about it when we get their own group. Uh, just if anybody's interested in coming, I mean that's a real asset down there having the museum in the It's very nice. Uh, do I hear a motion to pay the bills? Make a motion to pay the bills as presented. As presented. Motion to pay the bills as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. 
scares down in there somewhere. Really? That could be scary. Um, Motion to pay the bills as presented. We did have a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Uh, minutes from August 18th. Any corrections, omissions, additions? I didn't see any on that one. I suppose it was there. September 3rd, it was possible. I got out and running, but we're not going to have anything to do. Skip one. I lost my agenda, guys. Sorry. Trying to get out of here. Oh, okay. oh, August 18th. All right. Do I have a motion to approve minutes for August 18th? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, minutes from September 3rd. September 3rd with a correction. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Does anybody have any business needs come before this board this morning? Seeing none, I declare this meeting adjourned. Reminder, we have an executive session for the board that started five minutes ago.